Several days ago, Russian media published a video showcasing a new T-72 upgrade, which features many interesting things, but some of them might not be as good as they first seem. First of all, many people are under the assumption that this is a downgrade of a T-72B3, or rather T-72B3M, since the tank is, well, very similar. But the thing is that this is not a T-72B3 tank at all, this is just an upgraded T-72B tank that also received Contact 5 ERA as well as other things similar to the T-72B3, like the side skirts. But T-72B3 as T-72B3 has to have Sosna Ursite and the meteorological sensor to be a T-72B3. That was the entire point of that tank. The fact that both are now gone on this model means it is not a T-72B3. Now, what kind of upgrades did this T-72B receive? Well, the most notable thing is a new thermal sight, the 1PN 96MT-02 thermal sight. This is the same sight we have seen Russians use to modernize some T-62M tanks last year. This is a cheap thermal sight meant for mass production. It is an uncooled UFPA thermal, hence why it is so cheap, and hence why the recognition range for a tank size target is stated at no less than 2000 meters, which is on a low spectrum for modern thermals used on tanks. The only upside is a decent resolution, 640 by 480 which is comparable to most second-generation thermals used today. The thermals can detect a tank at 3 km. Recognition range means that it can be recognized as a tank at 2 km, but at 3 km it could probably be just a white blob or something that would not be very identifiable. Nevertheless, even if this thermal is inferior to the ones they have been using so far, it is still a thermal, and current tank engagements rarely exceed 2 km in this war if ever. Now, there are some clear downsides when compared to Sosna U, or rather PNMT, which is a new Russian site based on Sosna, and it is not just a the thermal that is problematic. You see, Sosna U, or PNMT, allows the tank to utilize automatic target tracking ability, which basically allows the gunner to lock onto the target and the fire control system will follow it and compensate for its movement. All the gunner has to do is pull the trigger. This feature is now gone. The biggest problem is that, unlike other tanks, the T-72B doesn't even have an automatic lead. Now, automatic lead basically allows the gunner to keep his sight on the moving target, engage automatic lead, then the fire control system would calculate the movement and move the gun in an appropriate position for firing. The gunner can then just shoot without having to guess where to aim to hit the moving target properly. Most tanks have been using that feature for decades, including the Ukrainian T-64 tanks, and the Russian T-80 and T-90 tanks. T-72B doesn't even have that. T-72B has numbers on the reticle, which during the leading of the target are used by the fire control system to display the correct number for the gunner to then put onto the target in order to engage it. This is all present in the already existing day sight of the T-72B. This means that for engaging the moving targets, the gunner will be forced to use the day sight if he wants to hit them accurately. This is, in my opinion, the biggest downside of using this sight for the T-72B. This sight has also been seen on the T-80 BVM tanks instead of the Sosna U, but in their case it is not that problematic. T-80 tanks, as I mentioned earlier, have automatic lead feature, so the gunner can engage the auto lead even when looking at the thermal monitor. Therefore, he can comfortably use the thermal for all kinds of engagements, be it a stationary target or a target on the move. In T-72B's case, I believe the thermal can mostly be used for target spotting, which is of course much better than nothing. One thing I forgot to mention is that the sight has a new cover, which can be opened by pulling a lever, but only when the hatch is open, since it is on the outside. But it would still keep the gunner somewhat protected. This is a better system than what Sosna used to have, which is just a bolted cover and cannot be removed quickly, forcing the crew to keep the sight unprotected. But, of course, this system is far inferior to the one of T-90M, where the covers can be opened from the inside. There are other things to note here. In the video published by the media, we get a short glimpse at the commander station, and one thing that I noticed is that the commander does not have any monitor on his side, nor does he have the gun control thumb switch. In T-72B3, even though the commander does not have his own thermal sight, he can use a monitor on his side to observe what the gunner is seeing through his monitor, and use the controls to fully take control of the tank's gun and turret if necessary. 
but it appears that this tank does not have any of that. Of course, he can still override the turret to where his sight is pointing, since that has been a feature on all T-72 tanks for a long time. One really good thing here though is that the monitor for the thermal is in a much better position, since it is practically on the same level as a day sight, unlike the Sent to b 3 which has it placed very low. Now the protection. The tank appears to have as much explosive active armor as possible. Most of the tank has been covered with it, the roof, the mantlet, even the lower front plate and the areas above the tracks. This seems to be on the same level of protection as we have seen on T-72B3 tanks several months ago. Now, it seems that the Russians have gone away from the bagged ERA. Now, big metal boxes are mounted over the ERA side skirts. I imagine the system follows the same principle as the turret boxes, which use ERA panels mounted at an angle. This is, of course, much better than the bagged ERA they were using in the early stages of the war, as it is much more rigid and far less likely to just fall off. I've seen people saying that, oh, Russia is unable to make SOS anymore, that is why they are downgrading their tanks. But in my opinion, I believe that they are using this cheap site in order to increase the rate of production. T-90M tanks are still being delivered with the PNMT, which is the same site as Sosna, so they can clearly still make them. It is possible that they want to focus PNMT sites for T-90M tanks only, or to rather limit their use on the less capable tanks. It is also possible that they looked at the losses they have been sustaining on all the tanks with Sosna U sites, and just realized it is not worth wasting that much money and resources on such tanks, which is also very likely because even though Sosna U is a great site, it does not fix many of the other issues the T-72B3 tanks have. Therefore, it is much better to just upgrade them with a much cheaper site that is faster and easier to produce. That way they can modernize more tanks, and if they get destroyed, which they undoubtedly will, the loss would not be so devastating. Of course, this site is in every way inferior, but it is a thermal, and it is not that horrible of a thermal. Therefore, it is a still very, very useful upgrade for the old tanks. It is also likely that these T-72 and T-80 tanks are being modernized by the 103rd BTRZ factory, the factory in the Far East that is tasked with modernizing the T-62M tanks I previously mentioned. Back when they announced the modernization of those T-62s, it was said that they will be modernizing 800 tanks in that factory, among which are the T-62s but in the footage from the factory we could see some T-80 tanks being worked on as well. If that is true, then these new T-72 and T-80 tanks would not slow down or impact the production of actual T-72B3 tanks. But that is just a possibility. The only way to know for a fact is to see if any new T-72B3 tanks will be delivered in the near future. That would be all. If you like my content, you can consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.